Okay, welcome everyone. Today's topic is analyzing deals in seconds. This is what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna give you a lot of rule of thumbs. Um, not only that, but I'm gonna show you how you need to analyze deals in 30 seconds or less, okay? The most you should spend on analyzing deals should be no more than a minute. If you are spending more than one minute to analyze a deal, you're doing something wrong, okay? So what I'm gonna tell you <clears throat> right away, I'm gonna just give you the rule of thumbs, okay? So before looking at uh, formulas, before looking at Chicago deal ball, none of that, I'm gonna show you how you need to think to analyze deals so they make, uh, so you make money, okay? So number one, um, when you are getting into real estate, you need to think about two things. Um, exit the strategy, okay? So you are gonna have either a fix and flip, a buy and hold, or a wholesale deal, okay? So now, the second thing that you need to think of is numbers. All the numbers need to make sense. This is, real estate is a numbers game. I wanna make sure that um, you understand where, what numbers you need to hit to buy, to rehab, for it to make sense. So when you look at a property, friends, the way to analyze it, you need to reverse engineer, okay, the numbers. So you, you should not start from the bottom up, meaning how much you're gonna pay for the property, how much the property is for sale, how much I'm gonna put um, for the rehab. No, the way to analyze a deal, you need to start from the top, working your way down, that is, so critical, okay? I'm gonna repeat this again. So you need to start from the top, going all the way down. So you need to know how much the property will be worth once all the repairs are made, okay? So meaning you need to know the ARV and then uh, working your way down because that's what most investors make a mistake. They start working from the bottom up. So what does that mean from the bottom up? They, they look at a property, they see the, the price. Okay, so okay, this, this property is selling for about 100,000 and then they say, well, I need to spend, let's say 30,000 in rehab. Okay, so now I'm at 130. Well, is that a good deal or, or is not a good deal? That's where most investors get into trouble because the, their mindset, they think bottom up. They start adding up and stacking up the expenses no, friends, the way you need to do it is start from the top. How much can I sell the property for once all the repairs, all the rehab has been done, okay? You need to start with that number first, okay? So let's take an example. When we look at a property, you need to say, okay, how much will this property be worth when it's in a moving ready condition looking beautiful? That's question number one, okay? And obviously through Chicago Deal Ball, we're gonna give you that number. But before we look at numbers, I just wanna work and show you the different mindset that you need to have. So let's assume that the property after repair value is worth 200,000, right? So the next question is, how much money am I gonna put into rehab, okay? So in order for you to know that, obviously you have to see the property from the inside, but let me tell you, when we analyze deals, you don't know, always have access to the property. So then you might be wondering, how in the world am I gonna know how much money I'm gonna put in the property if I cannot even have access to the inside of the property, okay? Secret number one, guys. So the way to identify your rehab estimate, it's just an estimate. It's going to be driven by the square footage, okay? So that is a number that you do need to know, okay? And then we're gonna take the square footage and multiply that by two. So let's assume a property has a square footage of um, 1,200 uh, square feet, okay? Multiply that by two. How much is that? 12 times two, 24. That's your magic number. $24,000, and again, this is an assumption, and I'm gonna tell you the, the two factors 
that we are assuming. We are assuming that the rehab is going to be light to medium, okay? Um, that's assumption number one. But let me go deeper into this assumption. When I say it's just a light to medium, what we mean is that we are going to be uh, just doing cosmetic work, meaning we're gonna update the kitchens, we're gonna update the bathrooms, we're gonna update the flooring, we're gonna paint, and we might change light fixtures, okay? That's about it. I'm gonna tell you what you are not doing. You're not putting a new roof, because every system that I, that I mention next is gonna cost you at least $10,000. So you're not putting a new, a new roof, you're not putting new windows, you are not redoing the electric system, you are not redoing the plumbing system, and you are not putting a new mechanical system or HVAC system, meaning the water heater, the furnace, and the AC, okay, condenser. You're not doing none of those, nor are you touching founda foundation issues, okay, because every system that, I, system that I just mentioned, you need to add at least $10,000, okay? So the objective, friends, is when you buy a property as an investor, you've got to look for properties that require light to medium rehab. So what I mean by that in terms of money, right? Light to medium, you are looking at no more than thirty-five to 40000 in rehab. The minute you start investing over 40000 into the rehab, guess what? you are touching one of the systems that I just mentioned. Either you're putting a new roof or you're touching something in the foundation, you're redoing some of the mechanicals, you're redoing some of the electric system, upgrading that, or you're touching plumbing, okay? That's when it's going to start going uh, out of control, meaning over 35,000 uh, or 40,000. Because why do you not want to spend more than that money? Very simple. The minute you start doing a lot of work on the house, you still need to, uh, you, you need to pull permits, right? Plumbing, electric, roof. Uh, so your risk, your rehab expense will quickly go skyrocket, okay? You want to prevent that. So when you look at properties, make sure that the rehab is light to medium. Nothing, nothing too extensive. No go rehabs. Because guess what? The minute you start taking like large projects where you need to do a lot of work, unless you have a construction background, it's going to take you a lot of time. It's like opening up a, a kind of worms. So you're opening up yourself for a lot of risk. So do you want to do that? Of course not. You need to think you are an investor. You are not a contractor. You're not a, you're not a construction company, right? Because you're going to be making money when you you are in and out of the deal quickly, right? Whether you do a fix and flip or a rental, you are in and out. I'm talking about in and out six weeks, okay? If your rehab is gonna take more than four, six weeks, that's not light to medium, okay? Keep those numbers in mind. No more than 35,000, 40,000 in rehab. So what does that mean now? We know, as an example, the property is worth, uh, after all the repairs have been made, 200,000. Now, um, you're going to spend about 30, 35 in rehab, okay? So, think about this. Take 200,000, split that into four, okay? What is that? Obviously, 50,000. So, think about this. You need to have one-fourth of the ARV as equity, okay? So, I'm talking about one-fourth of 200,000 is 50,000. So you need to have 50,000 in equity, okay, after you've done all the rehab. So where does that leave you, okay? Uh, very simple. That means that purchase price plus rehab should not exceed 150,000. I, I, I'm gonna repeat this because these are, this is magic, okay? If you violate these numbers, you are going to struggle making money in real estate, okay? This is like, you need to follow this like religion, okay? One fourth of the total ARV should be your equity after you've done all the work. So let's assume the property will be worth 200,000. 
that means that you can buy the property for let's say 120,000 and you're going to put in 30,000 in work all in 150 that's it that is three fourths of the ARV is considered purchase price plus rehab if you buy the property for let's say 140 and your rehab is 30,000 you're going to lose money okay you won't be able to do a flip and you're going to be super tight on the rental okay and not only that friends but the problem is that you're going to have money stuck in the property so on the back end um when you purchase the property we're going to be using other people's money meaning we're going to be using hard money lenders private money lenders so uh obviously once we do the rehab and rent the property we have to refinance uh on the back end meaning we need to bring a conventional lender to pay off the harmony lender but if you we don't have the 25 percent equity or the fifty thousand, guess what your money is going to be stuck in the property what's the consequence of that you're not going to be able to grow why because you have money stuck in the property the key to build a million dollar portfolio is that you have very little money stuck in the property or zero money okay for that to happen one fourth of the arv or 25 percent needs to be your equity so you work out the numbers right the, between the purchase price and the rehab add them up to make sure that all in you are at 75 percent of the arv so if the property is worth now let me switch the numbers if the property is worth the after repair value a hundred and fifty thousand okay can you divide that by four what's a hundred and fifty so a hundred and fifty thousand divide that by four okay that is uh divided by two it's seventy five thousand now seventy five thousand by two it's like thirty five so all in you should be at like one oh five one ten if the property is worth 150 you should be at 110 all in should be 110 okay does that make sense friends pardon the background noise uh <clears throat> i happen to be in uh playa del carmen in uh yucatan peninsula in mexico so things are going a little bit crazy in the background but i i hope you can hear me well um so let's just quickly review the numbers all in 75 percent do the math okay from the arv 75 percent should be your purchase price and your rehab <laughs> okay now when it comes to uh knowing the rental numbers okay let's assume that you are gonna uh do this turn this property into a rental use the one percent rule of thumb so what does that mean the one percent rule of thumb means that if you buy the property uh let's say for one hundred and fifty thousand, okay one percent of that should be your rental income so if you buy the property for all in one hundred and fifty thousand, then you should collect one percent of that which is 1500 okay that's simple so let's assume let's go back to the example the property is worth arv two hundred thousand. All in, your purchase price and rehab should be no more than 150000 Think about how much you need to collect for rent. At least 1500 okay? If you don't collect 1%, then you're not going to make uh, uh, at least 250 in positive cash flow every month, okay? Keep in mind the 1% rule of thumb. That is very critical, okay? So... When you analyze a property, I want to make sure that you use your, your brain, your mind. You don't even need a calculator. You don't, you don't need deal vault. Just quickly, first question is, how much can I sell this property for? Okay? If it's, uh, again, 200000 my purchase price for rehab should be 75%. That's it. How much should I rent it for? 1%. Um, so now the next question is how much am i going to pay for the property that is going to be driven by your exit strategy and how much the property needs in work okay 
So let's assume that the property after repair value is 200,000, okay? But you need 50,000 in work. Guess how much you need to pay for the property? You shouldn't pay more than 100,000. Exactly, you got it right. So now let's quickly look at uh, some examples. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a uh, Chicago deal book. Okay, so once I open up Chicago Deal Vault, we're gonna quickly look at a random property. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you the numbers. How we're gonna work the numbers backwards. So you reverse engineer from the ARV, okay? <clears throat> Okay. And then, uh, so what we're going to be looking at is the first thing. I'm just going to randomly open up uh, off market or pre foreclosures. Okay. So, and then I'm going to filter high equity in Cook County just to give it a, a good. Example. <laughs> okay, so we're pulling just uh, amazing deals in Cook County, over 2,700. All of these deals are home run deals because they have over 50% equity. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick this one in Bellwood, okay, randomly. <laughs> so remember what I told you at the beginning, if you spend more than a minute, you're doing something wrong. So remember, we're gonna start with the ARV. So this property is a two bedroom, two bath, okay? About a thousand square feet. So the next question, oh, this is a multi-unit guys. Um, okay, that's fine. What's the ARV of the property? Okay, it's between 162 to 178. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take sort of like the middle number. So it's gonna be maybe 170, okay? Now remember, all in purchase plus rehab, you should be at 75%. So I'm gonna multiply that by 75%. So now look at this. The most all in I should be stocking this property is 127. That includes purchase price plus rehab. Now rehab, how much am I gonna put in rehab? If the square footage is <coughs> about a thousand, remember multiply that by two, so the rehab is going to be 20,000 minus 20,000. Very simple. The most I should pay for this property should be 107. That's it. So now here in Chicago Deal Vault, you see, we're going to tell you it's a little bit more precise depending on your exit strategy. But as a ballpark, friends, so you don't need to use a system, nothing, not even a calculator. The most you should pay for this property should be 107, but keep in mind that you have a big assumption. The rehab should not ex exceed 20,000. For you to figure that out, obviously you need to go inside the property and the rehab should be light to medium, okay? So you've gotta do some work, but it's gotta be cosmetic. Floor, paint, light fixtures, bathrooms, kitchens, uh, that's about it. You shouldn't do big ticket items because that's just going to blow your numbers off. I'm going to pull up another one. Okay. Oh, and the rent. The rent, remember, should be the 1%. I'm going to pick another one in Hazelcrest. So how can we analyze this? Remember, <coughs> three bedroom, one and a half bath, 1,000 square feet. I'm going to make a parenthesis, guys. If you have the option between going for a three bedroom versus a two bedroom, it's a no brainer. You should always try to pursue properties that are three bedrooms, at least one or two bathrooms, okay? Because they're gonna be more marketable, you're gonna be collecting more in rent. And the square footage, French, please stay below 1,700 or 1,500 square feet. The minute you're, you're looking at properties over 2,000 square feet, guess what happens? Multiply 2,000 times two. Your rehab right off the bat is 40,000. 
Does that make sense? So you want to stay on their 1500 ideally. So this is perfect. Okay. 1000. So my rehab on this is going to be about 20,000, 25,000. That's light to medium. So my first question is, what's the ARV on this? Okay. ARV, let's say is uh, 150 to keep the numbers. So let me bring the calculator. 150. So 150 times 75. Okay. So all in, guys, you should be all in 112, and that includes your rehab. If your square footage is 1,000, guess what? Multiply 1,000 times 20, that's 20,000. So I'm going to subtract 20,000. So your purchase price should be about 90,000. And your rehab should be 20,000. Guys, we're going to have an amazing background music, okay? So I hope you can still hear me okay. We have the mariachis in the background. Okay, guys, so 92,000. And then Dilvolt is just going to give you that, right? But Dilvolt is going to be more precise depending on your exit strategy. So... Um, Hugo, we lost audio. Nobody can hear you anymore. Okay, can you hear me? Thank you for letting me know about the audio. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. So I just want to make sure, guys, because I hate complexity. And one of, my, one of my difficulties was when I had access to the MLS, I had no clue if it was a good deal or not a good deal, how much I should offer. Well, that's all scratched up. Guys, reverse engineer. Go, the first question you should always ask, what's the ARV? Because you're going to work your way backwards on the numbers. Most investors, guess what? They do it the other, the other way around. Therefore, they constantly overpay for properties. They are losing money on their flips, and their cash flow is very poor. Why? Because they work their numbers from the bottom up. You should always do reverse engineer. From the ARV, you work your way number, your way down. So remember, you should always have 25% equity on the deal. So guys, do you have a property address that, that you wanna analyze? Can somebody give me an address via the chat? That's gonna be really cool because we're gonna analyze your property in like seconds. And that's how it should be done, okay? You should always analyze properties like if you're spending more than a minute, something is not right. So can somebody send me a property? Uh, okay, somebody send me a property. Uh, there is a question I want to answer. Uh, how does Chicago Dealable calculate the ARV? Great question. So the question is, how do we come up with the ARV? <clears throat> Guess what? We have algorithms that run on a night, nightly basis. At night, for hours, we have algorithms that go through every single property, we pull the comps, and we give you the ARV. That is huge. And that was my issue with the MLS. MLS is like jumping into the ocean. You are lost. Deal Vault is a nice jacuzzi. Everything is controlled, okay? So we're gonna give you what you need. So somebody gave me, uh, I got a few properties. So I'm just gonna pull up one. Uh, so this is, I got a couple of them. So when you wanna analyze a property, just put it in deal vault. So this is one that I got from you guys. Oops, I got lost. This one in Maywood, search. Uh, Okay, let me see. I need to select these from the drop down. Search. Okay. It's looking for this property in Maywood. So remember, reverse engineer. The first thing that we need to ask what's the after repair value on this property in Maywood? 
okay, so what kind of property? Whoa, we have very little information on this property. We don't even know how many bedrooms, how many baths, how many square feet. Uh, so this is gonna be very hard, right? We don't have any information on this one. Uh, let me quickly go to the next one. You guys sent me several addresses. Um, okay, so power search. We're gonna analyze these in Berwyn. I mean, at least we need the number of bedrooms and the square footage. Okay, this one. Uh, ARV, 189, 190. So this is, you know, look at the pictures. Okay, so obviously it needs work. So flooring, paint, bathrooms, kitchen, everything that I mentioned, right? Uh, hopefully it doesn't need like a new electric system, new roof, new windows. Hopefully we don't need to do any of that. So take 190, okay guys? Let me bring up the calculator, 190. So how do you analyze that property in seconds? So 190 times 75%. Okay, because remember, you need 25% equity, so 142. So now you work the numbers. The 140 means your purchase price plus your rehab. Check this out, it is for sale for 140, 139. So there's very, very, very little room right here, but this is an MLS property, that's the problem. Okay, so there's not much meat in the bone. We should not pay more than, uh, let's say, if the square footage is 1,000, we're gonna spend at least uh, 20,000. So that minus 20,000. So the most we should pay for these properties should be somewhere in the 115 to 120, right? So if we go to deal vault, sure enough, flip 112, Rental up to 130, wholesale 103. Does that make sense? Um, so in deal, well, we're gonna give you the numbers like very precise. Obviously with this assumption, friends, that uh, the rehab is cosmetic, light to medium, no more than 35,000, that is so critical. So for you to hit those numbers, you need to target properties that are under 1,500 square feet. And the purchase price for those properties should be below 200,000, friends. The minute you start buying properties over 200,000, again, you are not going to make the most uh, from, uh, from, your, from your investment. Why? Because your risk is just gonna skyrocket. The minute, again, you start buying properties for over 200,000, then your rehab is going to be over 40,000 for sure. So your numbers, your risk, starts to get out of control. Please stick to purchase price plus rehab, no more than 175,000. I'm gonna repeat this again. Your purchase price plus rehab should not exceed 175,000. And if you spent 175,000 on purchase price and rehab, guess what? Your ARV should come in at 225, all the way up to uh, mid 50s, 250, okay? So if you think about those numbers, you need at least between 75,000 to 100,000 spread from your purchase price. So let's, let's look at this number. So if the ARV is 200,000, remember, all in should be no more than 150. Get it? Perfect. So then uh, my rehab is going to be about 30,000, 35,000, which means that all in I need to be at 150. So I'm gonna put it in the calculator because I wanna make sure that you follow the numbers that I'm saying. ARV, as an example, is 200,000, okay, 200. You need 25% equity, so all in purchase plus rehab should not exceed 150. So let's assume that your rehab is going to be 35,000. The most you should pay for the property should be 115. So think about this. You need a spread of at least 75,000 to 100,000 from your purchase price, guys. So let me give you an example. We're purchasing a property in uh, Enwood Park for 150, okay? It appraised uh, 225. 
So if you think about it, at 25,000 that I told you, boom. It makes sense, right? So now we're buying another one this month uh, in um, one prospect for 160. Add at least 75,000. It should appraise for 235. It appraised for 245, guys. Does that make sense? It is that simple. You should analyze deals in seconds, 30 seconds or max a minute, okay? So again, think about it. I'm gonna purchase the price for 150. I should be able to sell it for 250. That simple between 225 to 250. And my rehab should be light to medium. If it's a gold rehab, it's just gonna throw your numbers off. Does that make sense, guys? Very simple. I wanna make sure that you really, really get these numbers down, okay? <clears throat> okay, somebody is lost. I wanna make sure that I, I, I'm not losing you. Um, so with the rentals, sometimes the taxes are low enough that you can pay more and still make the desired cash flow. Yeah, when you have a rental, it's a more forgiving offer. You, you, you can afford to pay more because uh, you're gonna recoup it in the long term, okay? Plus the tenant pays for not only your mortgage, but also they pay for all the utilities. So you're gonna be good on rentals. Flips, no. Flips, you need to be very strict. You need to make at least a 25% 20% uh, return on investment. Okay, so another question is, using the 75% as an offer number does not take into account all the holding expense points, etc. Andrew says we should use 70%. Okay, um, yeah, there are gonna be some factors, of course, that uh, you need to take into account that are deal breakers, such as high taxes, right? Um, also property type. Uh, let's say frame versus brick, or a two bedroom versus a three bedroom, or a property with garage versus no, uh, no garage, or basement, no basement. There are gonna be other factors, of course, guys, but this is the point, okay? I wanna make sure, this is objective, don't get so hung up in the details. I wanna make sure that when you're presenting, when you're presenting a deal, you need to analyze it in seconds, in, in one minute, tops, okay? Uh, that simple. It's not gonna be to the penny. If you wanna go to the penny, obviously you can come to Deal Vault, okay? But mentally, you should be able to know where you need to buy the property for. Again, you need at least 75,000 to 100,000 from your purchase price, assuming your rehab is gonna be like me. Again, so I'm buying a property for 150. What should the ARV be at 75 to 100,000? 150 plus 75 is 225 to 250. I'm gonna put it in the calculator. So you buy a property, again, for no more than uh, 150 to 175, right? That's my purchase price. Add 75,000 for a spread. The ARV should be between 225 to 250. And, and you're gonna be okay if the, if the rehab is like medium again no more than 35 uh, okay the minute you rehab goes over 40,000 guys um, opening up a can of worms I'm telling you because we've done rehabs of over 40,000 and you're touching uh, other systems not only that you, you are dealing with the villages inspections okay you need a uh, uh, permits okay so then uh, you're just increasing your risk why is the Chicago Diamond ARB different than the Zillow's estimate? Okay, Zillow is not accurate. Let me tell you, we use Zillow for rents at the property level. It is so accurate for the rents, okay? But for the ARV, please don't use Zillow. While we use in Dealable, we actually go to the MLS and pull properties that have sold in the last six months. Um, that are comparable, so meaning the same number of bedroom baths within uh, um, uh, use deal wall. I mean, the estimate is just gonna give you an idea, but sometimes it's way off, okay? So again, let me just quickly summarize everything we talked about today. Uh, when analyzing a property, think about ARV, and from there you work your way down, guys, uh, the next number that you need to know is your rehab. 
remember, you shouldn't spend more than 35, 40,000. All in, should, you should be at uh, 70 to 75%. So somebody mentioned that Andrew uses the 70% rule, okay? Uh, yes, Andrew's mastery students, th their numbers are, are really, really strict, right? They're, they're very, very low. Um, but for the average investor, you're going to be okay, guys, because we go by these numbers. Even though we're mastery students, 75%, just to quickly analyze the deal, it's gonna be good, okay? Obviously, the, the less you pay for the property, the better off you're gonna be. But just to be on the safe side, you need 25% equity or all in, you should be at 75% of the ARV. So if the property is worth 200,000, all in should be 150. Therefore, between the purchase price and the rehab should not exceed 150. You work out the numbers the way you want. Either you buy it for 100 and put 50, but ideally, I rather buy it for 135 and put 15,000. Does that make sense, guys? Listen to what I said. I rather pay 135 but put in 15,000 than buying it for 90,000 and put in 60,000. Does that make sense? Why? Listen to what I just said. Okay, it's a night and day. If you buy it for 90 and put 60. To do that work is gonna take you three months. But if I buy it for 135 and I put in 15,000, that project is gonna take me no more than four weeks. Huge difference, huge difference. So you rather pay more for the property, but requires less work. That is huge, guys. That is huge, keep that in mind. Pay a little bit more. That is why lately, I've been, uh, we've been paying a little bit more for the properties, but guess what? We're doing less and less and less work. The property in Caesar, we bought it for 135. We put in 12,000. The property in Elmwood Park, we're buying it for 150. We're gonna put in 15,000. The property in Mount Prospect, we're gonna buy it for 160. We're gonna put in 12,000. Does that make sense? So we're we're paying a little bit more in better areas, but yet the rehab is less than 15,000. That's that's what you want. You wanna go in and out quickly. You don't want to, let's say, pay 90 and put in 60,000 unless you have a construction company. But we are investors, guys. Think about this. This is so critical to uh, what I'm gonna say next, guys. If <clears throat> construction made money, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think that all contractors would be wealthy and rich? But guess what, they're not. So contractors, are not wealthy, nor are they rich. Investors are, so you guys are investors. I wanna make sure that your mindset, mindset is set to be an investor. You're not a, con, a, a contra, construction company, get it? So you have to do as little work as possible, in and out, okay? That is the key to building a million dollar rental empire in and out quickly. You don't want to be stuck in the project for three, four months and then only do three or two projects a year. You will never grow exponentially. You have to be in and out. Even if you pay a little bit more for the properties, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is this month, between this month and, and April, I'm going to take you to a couple of properties that exemplifies what I'm saying. Uh, very little work, Okay, but we're paying a little bit more for the property and they're in great areas, B plus, A minus areas. Okay, uh, stay away from A areas, like very, very expensive areas, or you know, uh, we don't go to areas where the infrastructure is depressed, okay? Uh, because you don't get collectible tenants, you don't uh, sell the properties for top dollars, okay? Um, so again, I just wanna make sure that all of you can analyze deals in less than a minute. That is my objective for tonight. I will quickly sum summarize it. 75% all in from the ARV. Remember, you reverse engineer the numbers from the ARV, go down. Never go from the bottom up. Never look at the price and go up and not your rehab. Never do that. Reverse engineer numbers. From the ARV, you go down. Uh, the next number you need is your rehab. It's got to be less than 40,000 guys. And then take into account the square footage, multiply that by two, and you are only doing uh, flooring, kitchens, bathrooms, uh, painting, light fixtures. You will not put a new roof. 
you will not do plumbing, electric, foundation, gutters, all of that is way too expensive or mechanicals. That is the key to building a, an empire very quickly, okay?